my name is Graham Silveria Martin and I'm a, a Scottish artist based in South East London. I'm predominantly a painter, um, but I guess not, not generally medium specific, so I work across print, um, sculpture um, and installation. I mean, I think of my practice as sort of research based, I guess, and so sometimes ideas come out of that research and other times um, it'll just be, you know, things we stumble upon from day to day experiences. So I'm interested in how desire manifests now and historically, and particularly when it's in a kind of oppressive environment, which would otherwise sort of stifle connection um, and intimacy and, and, and how that has informed my experience and my position. Pleasure and desire, they're kind of really complex ideas and they're I think particularly in relation to desire, it's something that I explore kind of furtively in the studio. Um, and perhaps that is a kind of natural disposition for someone who repressed, you know, some of those uh, feelings for a time, although I guess we all do to a certain extent. Um, and, and I suppose I enjoy now exploring them more freely, whilst in a kind of art making context, um, I'm aware of the kind of breakdown of public and private and how, you know, when those things, the work leaves the studio, it is, it is something that's more public. And I suppose in the context of this work, the work that I have in the exhibition, um, there's that slippage as well between something that you are exploring from a kind of objective outsider perspective um, as an observer, and then something that you are ultimately kind of deeply invested in or even like turned on by. I'd say that queer methodologies, uh, ways of looking um, and approaches to making kind of underscore my practice. And I suppose a thread that runs through that is this kind of idea of searching for or locating fragments of histories that uh, weren't recorded and perhaps contributing to a kind of ciphered queer archive. I don't always find it that helpful to dissect uh, work when it's in progress in the studio as it can run the risk of sort of derailing uh, my creative process. But that said, I do um, kind of often return to um, ideas like that come out of research such as Fiona Anderson's writing on cruising as method or Catherine Grant and Kate Random Love's writing on fandom as methodology um, and how those perhaps apply to my practice more generally. Um, so how they inform you know, the way that I approach um, making and uh, painting or uh, research. Exploring those ideas is helpful for me, at least in understanding like, why we do what we do and uh, why we approach things in that way, and perhaps gains a kind of deeper understanding of um, my position more generally. I think the same material concerns are present in my work regardless of medium. Um, and on the one hand, in painting, I guess that extends to surface and a kind of fastidious attention to detail. And so in painting, that extends to the material that I'm working on, so the substrate and uh, its weight and the, the weave of the canvas, um, as well as um, the properties, like material properties of, of the paint. Um, I typically build up grounds in these sort of very liquid, watery stains um, and then use primer to determine the extent to which the paint can sort of permeate or saturate the canvas. So that's quite an important kind of uh, play, play between those things as, as, as I'm building up a ground. Um, and I'm also kind of favour using transparent and semi-transparent paints um, and I'm also interested in, I guess, the level of granulation that occurs with acrylic paint when it's used in this way, sort of more akin to uh, watercolour, I suppose. Um, and all of those things play into this idea of building up a kind of multiple layers of process and it being visible. So you can kind of see through to much earlier stages. It, those material concerns relate to some of the conceptual ideas that run through my practice in that um, it's a kind of history of process. So there's a kind of um, trace of 
um, how, how the paintings are made. And that perhaps speaks to um, the kind of traces of lived experience that make up those histories that were written in the margins or not written at all. Paint is kind of irreversible. And the same applies when in that priming process with, you know, once it's sort of taken too far, then it becomes a different kind of painting. And um, yeah, it's frustrating at times, I suppose, where you perhaps spend a couple of weeks working on something and then you have to step back and realize like it's, it's not, it, it's, um, you need to put it aside, you know, it needs to, you need to start working on something else. Um, and I guess it's, that's because there's no sort of tangible outcome for that um, period of time. But it, I mean, it's also really useful in that it informs my thinking or the decisions I make going forward. Um, so that it's, not, it's not kind of wasted time as such, but it is that trying to find uh, that balance, I suppose.